In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the sixth part of a series of sermons on the sacraments. Today we will be outlining Frank Sheed on the sacrament of penance. To review from last time, sanctifying grace is the most important thing in this life because it is absolutely necessary for salvation. Without sanctifying grace, we cannot live a supernatural life and we cannot get into heaven, let alone live there. If we lose sanctifying grace, we've lost everything. One night, St. Alphonsus Rodriguez was weeping bitterly at the thought of how often he had offended God. In the midst of his tears, he saw our Lord standing in front of him, along with twelve saints, one of whom was St. Francis of Assisi. Now St. Francis said to him, My brother, why are you weeping? St. Alphonsus Rodriguez replied, O dear saint, if one venial sin displeases God so much that a whole life spent in weeping for it would not be sufficient to make reparation to God for it, how great should be my grief, I who have sinned so much. At these words, our Lord looked on him with such great affection as if to tell him how acceptable to him these tears were. Then the vision disappeared. From that time on, St. Alphonsus Rodriguez grew more devout and more fervent, and he never stopped grieving for his venial sins and by even more serious sins which he had offended God. By how many faults have we offended God by even more venial or more serious sins than this holy man? And how many tears have we shed for them? The problem is that we don't even realize what mortal sin does to our chances for heaven and the consequences that it has on our souls. Remember that there are two kinds of sins, mortal and venial. A mortal sin is a serious offense against the laws of God. A mortal sin destroys supernatural life that God poured into our souls at baptism. And there are three things necessary to make a sin mortal. First, there must be grievous matter. Second, there must be sufficient reflection. And third, full consent of the will. Now, a venial sin is a lesser sin against the laws of God in matters of less importance, or in matters of greater importance if the offense is committed without sufficient reflection or full consent of the will. But what happens to our supernatural life if we commit one mortal sin? With one mortal sin, we lose sanctifying grace. When we have lost sanctifying grace, our supernatural life is gone, and any chance or hope that we had to make it to heaven is gone too. If we lose sanctifying grace, we lose God, and so we've lost everything. Worse yet, we cannot get ourselves back to the supernatural life by our own natural abilities. We need supernatural help, because supernaturally speaking, our souls are dead. The sacrament of penance forgives our sins, and that is something which is totally beyond our nature and our ability to do. Who can forgive sins but God? Only God has this power, but because He is God, and He loves us, and He wants all men to be saved, He will to give this power to men so that they can continue being instruments of bringing dead souls to life. Our Lord gave this power to men on on the day of His resurrection. The Council of Trent says, Our Lord instituted the sacrament of penance, particularly at the time when, after rising from the dead, He breathed upon His disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. The consent of all the fathers has always understood that by this striking act and by these unmistakable words, there was given to the apostles and their successors the power of remitting or forgiving and retaining sins for reconciling the faithful who have fallen after baptism. Our Lord gave this church, or or this command to His church through His apostles, this power to forgive sins which has been given to the church to be carried on by her priests. Because the church has this authority given to her by God to forgive sins, she also has the the authority to tell us how it is to be exercised. Now, there are three conditions that are necessary for a good confession. The first is that we must have sorrow or contrition for our sins. 
The second is that we must confess these sins to the priest. The third, we must do this with the desire to do the penance given to us by the priest to make satisfaction for our sins. Now, as we remember, every sacrament has matter and form. The matter is the stuff needed for the sacrament, just like water is needed for baptism. And form is the words. The sacrament of penance is no different. The matter for this, sacraments, or for this sacrament are the sins that we have committed. And this goes along with the three conditions which we just mentioned. Sorrow for sins, confession for sins, and the desire to make, make up for them through penance. Now we have to confess all mortal sins that we have committed since baptism, that we know we have not yet confessed. This is called necessary matter, because it is necessary to confess each and every mortal sin. Although due to human weakness we are forgetful, we may not remember everything, and God knows this, so he doesn't bind us to the impossible. So we have to confess every mortal sin that we know we have not yet confessed. If we don't know of any, or if we can't remember, don't worry. You're acting on goodwill, and God is pleased with this. Then we should confess our venial sins, or even past sins which have been forgiven, but for which we are particularly sorry for. We should remind ourselves of the sorrow of St. Alphonsus Rodriguez, who had this sorrow for his venial sins, and this should draw us to confession. But we have to have matter for confession, which is sin. We can't just go to get absolution without bringing anything. No matter, no sacrament. If a priest gives absolution where there is no matter, he commits a sin of sacrilege. Now why is this important to mention? Because this goes along with the three conditions which I mentioned before. Sorrow, confession, and satisfaction. And these all make up the matter that go along with the sins. So just bringing a, a list of sins is not enough. We have to be sorry for them. If there is no sorrow on the penitent's part, then the matter is not complete. A priest cannot give absolution if he sees no sorrow in the heart of the penitent, because then both the penitent and the priest will commit a sacrilege. Now what do I mean by sorrow or contrition? The Council of Trent defines contrition as a profound sorrow and detestation for sins committed with the resolution of sinning no more. I'll repeat that. A profound sorrow and detestation for sins committed with the resolution of never sinning again. Now there are two types of contrition. Perfect contrition and imperfect contrition or attrition. Perfect contrition is sorrow because we love God and we have disobeyed Him, who is entitled to our obedience and to whom we owe everything we have. And the second, which is imperfect contrition or attrition, is a lesser sorrow, which is the fear of having lost heaven and the punishments of God that await us. Of course, perfect contrition is the best, but imperfect contrition or attrition is sufficient for forgiveness. But attached to contrition is the firm purpose of amendment. Now, this firm purpose of amendment is the mark of sorrow. Now, we don't need to be emotionally upset, but we do need to have our minds set not to commit sin again. If we are resolved not to sin again, then we need to have a plan of action. A man who watches bad videos needs to get rid of his videos first, because he must hate the fact that these are causing him to sin. Then when he goes to confession, if he's destroyed this, he is free of the burden of holding on to these videos and the things that lead him to sin. This is a firm purpose of amendment. Now if you're just confessing venial sins, you must have this firm purpose of amendment for at least one of the venial sins that you are confessing. For mortal sins, we need to have this firm purpose of amendment for all of them. Every last one, no exceptions. That's the way it is, and that's the way the church tells us. Now, true contrition and firm purpose of amendment are two parts to the same coin. They both go together, and one cannot be separated from the other. Now, the second condition for the sacrament, which is part of the matter, is the act of confessing our sins to the priest. Now, we already mentioned about confessing all mortal sins we know we, have, we, know we have not yet confessed. 
This is the necessary matter. And so when we confess mortal sins, we have to mention the type of sin, the number, and any conditions uh, that change the nature of the sin. I'll give an example of this. Someone comes in and confesses bad thoughts. Now the penitence needs to be more specific. What? Does that mean that I have to confess every detail? Well, absolutely not. But we need to confess the sin so that the confessor understands exactly what is being said. The problem here, that is a bad thought, could be anything. It could be thoughts of blasphemy, envy, anger, impurity. So we need to be specific in telling the priest so that he knows exactly what we are confessing. Then we tell the number. I indulged in thoughts of murdering someone five times. Because it's a mortal sin, we have to confess everyone. We also have to confess the number. But the priest also needs to know the circumstances that might change the condition or the sin or make it more serious. For example, if the thoughts of murder were about a bishop, this is an important circumstance because it adds, to the, it adds the sin of sacrilege on top of the sin of murder. Now, don't worry if you don't remember all of this. It's the priest's job to help you along and to tell you how to get through this. Now, sins that we must confess must be our sins. They can't be anyone else's sins. Remember, this is our confession. It's not somebody else's confession. Now, there's a story that is often told about St. Alphonsus, who, when a wife went in to confession... She spent most of her time confessing her husband's sins and very little time in regard to her own confession. Now he gave her a penance to correct this fault. He said, for your sins, say five Hail Marys. But for your husband's sins, I want you to say 15 decades of the rosary. Now we don't want to commit any new sins in the confessional, especially sins of detraction. So that's why these things are important to remember. Of course, what we tell the priest is under the seal of confession, and he'd die before he said anything. We should also remember that what a priest tells us is secret, and we are not to speak of it to anyone else in order to protect the priest. Our confessions must be prudent and sincere, and we should not hold anything back. Always confess the most serious sin first, and that way we are not tempted to conceal them later from shame. This makes the rest of the confession easier. Now, if we are having a problem with a certain sin, just say, Father, I'm having a tough time, and the priest will be glad to help you through this. We should not be afraid to confess our sins. Remember, we are there to tell the priest how bad we are. We're not there to tell the priest how good we are. That's the purpose of confession. If we start telling the priest how good we are and making excuses for all our sins, then this is the fault of pride. Now, we must be humble and truthful. We should not hide things by mispresenting them and trying to make them seem less serious or try to make them seem something else to the priest. Remember, this is a self-accusation. The penitent is the jury, he's the prosecutor, and he's the defendant. Our Lord is the judge, but the priest stands in God's place. And so he needs to know exactly what the sins are. It can be, for example... I was disrespectful to my superior five times, and I am under the vow of obedience. This way he gives the sin, the number, and the circumstance of which he should be judged. Now, confession is not a story or a narrative of the events of life. And we don't need to tell why we did all these things, because this only looks like we're trying to lessen our own culpability. It's easy. All we need to do is just admit it. We need to have that spiritual maturity to admit all our faults without blaming others. There's a great ease and a great peace in confession once we come to grips with the fact that, yeah, I did it, I might as well confess it. Now, the third condition, which is integral for confession, is the satisfaction or the willingness to do the penance that the priest gives us to make up for our sins. This is a part of justice. Now, we make up for our sins by doing the penance that the priest gives us. We should expect the confession or the confessor to give us a larger penance for serious sins. After all, the Council of Trent commands the priest to do just that. Of course, if we really can't do the penance, then we must tell the priest right then. He is actually trying to help us by giving us a penance, but if the penance doesn't do that, it's no help to us, so we need to tell the priest. 
So if we have confessed a serious sin and we get a larger penance, we shouldn't be upset. After all, we would be in hell for all eternity for one mortal sin. That we should love God and weep for even our venial sins, like St. Alphonsus Rodriguez, and be willing to do more on our own because we have such sorrow for our sins because of what our sins have done to God. The penance the priest gives us is our sentence from the judge to pay for our sins. So we should do our penance as soon as possible so that we don't forget. A few things that will help us to have a true horror for sin and a desire for confession would be to read the lives of the saints, the imitation of Christ, and meditate on the passion of our Lord so that we could truly see what sin costs. So we'll do a quick review. If we commit one mortal sin, we lose sanctifying grace, and the ability to get to heaven is lost. The sacrament of penance becomes necessary for salvation if we have fallen into one mortal sin after baptism, because it gives us the only, the only hope of returning to sanctifying grace. To receive the sacrament validly, we need to bring the proper matter for confession. So we need to confess all mortal sins that we knowingly have not confessed since baptism. And it is good to confess venial sins to gain the sacramental graces. We need also to have sorrow and true contrition for our sins. We need to confess our sins to the priest. And we need to have the desire to fulfill the penance given to us by the priest. And this sacrament is the sacrament that brings a spiritually dead soul to life. Now we will continue with the sacrament of penance for next time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.